G'day guys, Steve Morgan here and Jamie McEwen, Gun Gold Coast Angler here at ABT headquarters this afternoon for a bit of a tackle segment um, talking about a lure that Jamie I think both you and I have really fallen in love with over the years and yep. that of course is the OSP Bent Minnow. It's like it owns the genre nearly yeah. for top waters doesn't yep. it? And what, what's your history with Bent Minnows? Um, mate it's the first top water lure I throw now all the time wherever I go. Um, I probably started throwing it after the it really come on the market because I was mostly looking for it to be a really um, standard surface swim like the normal top water lures but once you sort of got got away from it and started using it the brim just love it yeah, Crazy look, style. I blame uh, Tony from Sporties yep. for uh, for introducing me to it. I had him as a non-boater at an event at Bribey Island. We ended up, it was a really ordinary day in the canals at Newport, and he was throwing this top water, and he was just ripping it hard, hard. Yep. I'm just going crazy non-boater in the back of the boat, what's going on? But yep. he explained the concept to me and when I tied it on and started using it, I found out what a lot of people found out and that was that this lure pulled the big fish out of the packs. Yep. You know, often you're fishing a top water, the little brim come and peck at it, it seemed for the bent minnow, more often than not the big one would come up and just start chomping on that yep. uh, on that lure. So it's made by OSP. OSP is a Japanese company, it stands for Osprey Spiritual Performer. It's in the back here. Crazy Japanese name, but it's you know it's a crazy design lure. Yep. But it's look, let's let's just go through how it works for the people. Like you don't just throw this and, and tweak it on the surface. It's a real violent retrieve, yeah. isn't it? Yeah I think the more erratic the, the, re, the retrieve, the better the the, um, the action from the fish following it. I remember uh, this was the actual colour of lure that I used in the Australian Open in 2017. It was the very yeah. first event that I live streamed and it was the very first, uh, it was the first time I suppose I could show the masses and how much I love fishing the Bitmen and how I fish them now. Interestingly, Blake O'Grady came up to me uh, this year and he said, I was watching those videos from you up Middle Harbour fishing those bit minnows. It's like you're throwing them and then you've got Parkinson's disease because yep. I throw them out and I just give it that little rip on the water and what it does is is this this it, one ripple pull the lure down and it ends up like this and the next ripple make it jump out of the yep. of, off the surface so for me that's a real a real fleeing prawn retrieve yep. so i don't know if you're the same as me but i'll throw it i'll rip 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 it as soon as i see something coming to look at it i'll just stop it yep. and then the fish will come up now another thing that uh that tony from sporties showed me was he showed me this this setup with this assist hook in the middle out of the box, the bent minnows come with this nickel hook, yep. razor sharp, yep. and really, really light, which makes that lure really, really yep. buoyant. And I and you both think, I think, that that's the key to success of the bent minnow, is to have those really nice, light factory hooks in yep. there. But this is a, like a Gold Coast addition for fish that are a little bit finicky and don't want to engulf that whole lure. Yep. The ones that come up and just want to pluck at it, they're going to get hooked on those hooks. And are you, a, are you in favour of the assist hook? Um, it depends where I'm sort of fishing and, and what the bite is like at the time. I'm definitely a fan of the, the original hooks. I think I, I won't use it unless I've got the original hooks. I think you definitely need the original hooks on it. Um, and when I'm in the canals, I will use the assist hooks if they're more just sort of sucking at it rather than really committing to the, the top water. Yep, I think I'm in the same situation. If they're really committing to it, yep. a couple of the original trebles are really yep. good. Now, a lot of people that I fish with, especially a lot of non-boaters that I fish with over the years, they've like up the gauge of the hook on yep. the bent minnow and, and I've just noticed their catch rates drop really down. I think this lure likes to sit high in the water. Yep. When it sits high in the water, the brim sort of have to grab it to pull it under yeah. to see what it's about. And if you look at some of the cutaway footage that we've got here, you'll see that when you're looking up at this lure from underwater, the surface is like a mirror yeah. and you nearly see double the bait on there. So the bait, when it's hit against the surface, it looks like nearly two tails coming out yep. of it. So I don't know if that's attractive to the fish or not, but it's definitely what the lure looks like by sitting that tail just under the surface. Really interesting cutaway that we got going here. Now, in the ABT Grand Final that we've just had down in uh, East Gippsland, you fished your bent minnows in a really interesting way. And we're gonna look at some of the footage of that now, but just yep. run us through that technique. So, <coughs> I got onto this sort of technique a few years ago down at Malakuta in, a, in one of the qualifiers and I was fishing for black room and it was a little bit different in they wouldn't commit to the lure while it was sitting on the surface it was more of a move it across the surface for the first meter or so give it a little pause and then just give it a little twitch just to get the lure under the water and then they're so finely tuned you can actually just keep them under the water under the surface just a, a foot you can even get them down to a meter at times but you just give it a twitch and give it a twitch and just sort of it just comes back towards the boat but it's slowly 
sort of meandering under the water and they just love it. So it's nearly like a jerk bait, which is yeah. under the water, but it's lacking that vibration yeah. of a jerk bait. Really interesting that you did well in the BEM there. BEM was the only day I caught a limit in that grand final and yeah. I used a very similar lure, a jackal serum, you know, which got under the water as well. No action at all, but yep. just twitch it along, and it seems like that's what the fish like. It really seems to me that that's a real black broom technique. Yep. The blacks love it, whereas the yellowfin, they just like crash tackling it off the surface. Yeah, I find, especially down in Victoria, the bent minnows work really well in areas where there's a lot of garfish. Um, I find in the, up the back of Malacuta and at BEM as well, there was a lot of small garfish that were similar profile, similar profile to the um, bent minnow. And it just must look like a little garfish under the surface, just sort of swimming along and a big buck comes up and ambushes it. Now, we're going to cut to a little bit of footage now from uh, Port Stephens when we're doing some scouting from uh, from this year for the 2019 ABT tour. We're going to go to Port Stephens and we're going to go in October, which is probably a time of the year where the top water bite might be on. Um, run us through, uh, both you and I fish a braid leader combo for bent minnows. Yep. Run through your setup. Okay, so I would be using a um, probably eight lead, eight pound leader, uh, eight pound braid, and I start with six pound leader. Yeah, so these things are pretty expensive. They're mid thirties dollars yeah. in most tackle shops. Don't go tying them on your two pound. You don't need to tie them on the two pound because they are very unline shy when that leader's on yeah. top of the water, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, I find they work really well in rock walls and all that sort of stuff as well. So they're, they're a, a great lure to to use, but yeah, don't uh, throw them on two pound. And I'd go as far as to say, if I'm only going to have a couple of top water lures in my brimming kit to take all over Australia, a bent minnow would definitely be one of those baits. Yeah, I was of, uh, of the opinion that the bent minnows, the silent bent minnows were really great in the canals, um, but the rattling bent minnows weren't great like out in the flats because they weren't calling in the fish. But I've been using the, the rattler um, a fair bit lately and now it's, it's rattle and silent and they're pretty much the, the only top water laws I throw now. That's right. Um, I suppose that rattling version of the vent bent minnow came out maybe about a year ago. Yeah. Um, and and it, look, it mightn't seem to be much of a difference. Are any of these? That's a silent one. They're all the silent one. Yeah. No. Nah. That's a rattle. There we go. That's a rattle there and you can probably hear, you know. Yeah. That, that it, rattle. It does make a big difference, I think, on the flats with the, there's just not enough noise on a big open flat for a silent bet, you know, to, to call the big fish in, I don't think. Um, but you put the, the rattle one out there and it's, it's they're all over it. Now, as we go to some footage now from uh, from the very first tournament I live streamed at the Australian Open, we can see a, a string of big brim coming on these uh, these white coloured bent minnows yep. up in Middle Harbour. Um, explain to the people watching what is the ideal time and scenario for bent minnows. And for me, it's water over 20 degrees yep. and it's clear water. And if there's a bit of ruffle on the water, just all the better. Are there any more ideal situations you like? Um, <clears throat> for me, I like, I like sort of a, a silty sand flat with a bit of a drop off or a bit of a um, different, a discoloured sand um, or weed flat. And I find the fish will, will sit in that deep water or the discoloured sand or, or weed and they'll ambush the lure as it comes over the clear sand and then into the darker darker water. Now if you're not a brim fisherman don't worry because they make these bent minnows in the 76, 86, I think they make a 106 and a 130 sizes and those two big sizes, threadies, dewies, any predatory fish really love them. We don't have time to talk about that today but uh, rest assured there is a bent minnow which I'm sure was invented by a Japanese guy who left it on his dashboard yeah. for too long <laughs> and it blew up. There is a, a place for the a bent minnow in any top water angler's tackle box and uh, if you haven't got them you're going to need them for the brim tour uh, this Definitely. coming year. So uh, for more information, uh, Google Fish Tech Solutions. They're the Australian importer and distributor of these. All good tackle shops have them. Um, it's arguable what the best colour is. I don't think it really matters. I'll throw chrome ones, I'll throw stripy ones, white ones. I like the white ones because I can see them a lot. Yep. Um, what's your favourite colour? Uh, the clown head, the, the bright pink head one. There you go. So everyone's got their favourite colour. Uh, I don't think it matters too much, but do yourself a favour and get yourself a bent minnow.